My perfect card making formula is something I use whenever I have a hard time coming up with a good card design. This formula, or card making recipe if you will, has never let me down. It consists of five ingredients and I'll break them down for you in this video. Hello crafters, this is Yana Smakula. Welcome back to my channel. There are five components to an easy and perfect handmade card. We're going to explore each of them one component at a time. A simple backdrop creates an easy and the most perfect background for a card. Typically, I like to use colored cardstock for the background of my cards. It can be either a light or a dark color cardstock. I try to stay away from plain white unless I'm using some sort of specialty white cardstock. When you use colored paper, you can either use it as is or take it up a notch by using it in conjunction with other products. I do try to keep things minimal and keep my background rather simple. I don't want the background to take attention away from the rest of the card. I want it to complement my card. You can dry emboss the background using an embossing folder. Here's one I embossed with a Spellbinders Scallops embossing folder. This is a simple design that's very clean and it's not busy. The cardstock I'm using is the Spellbinders Barely Peach. Another option is to use a background die. Here I used a stitching die. This is a circular stitch background die from Spellbinders, but I didn't stitch it. It looks amazing unstitched, almost like some sort of beautiful lace. One more option for you, if you have the hot foil machine, is to foil a background. Here I foiled my skinny stripe background glimmer plate from Spellbinders in opal foil. This is almost like a watermark foil, almost white, but not quite. And I foiled this background plate twice. You can see the line doubled on the background. So our first component is a background. Try to stay simple, use colored or specialty cardstock. Next, I like to use a simple but interesting shape over the background. The shape or the label will house the focal point for the card. I prefer to use oblong shapes for my labels for A2 cards so that the label is somewhat proportional to the card. So for example, an oval, a diamond, or a rectangle. I try to stay away from using a circle or a square label on A2 cards. So let's see, I would use a die cut shape for the foiled background and then the foil shapes for the die cut and the dry embossed backgrounds. This way, I don't have too much foiling happening on one card. And at the same time, if I can, again, this way, I add at least a little bit of foiling to the other cards where I have no foiling at all. Now, there are many different products, both dies and glimmer plates and even stamps to help you create the perfect label to place in the center of your card. So pick a label shape and place over your background. If I can, I like to add two to three scrap layers of cardstock underneath my labels to make them sturdier. The foiled labels, for example, were foiled on the Spellbinders Specialty Glimmer cardstock, which is rather thin. It isn't as thick as I prefer. So I back it up with additional layers to create one sturdy die cut. I also always use foam adhesive squares to pop the label up on the card. I love my cards to add dimension and I tend to add a lot of it. Number three on my perfect card making formula is the sentiment. Of course, every card needs one. I don't think you can have a card without a sentiment. And here, once again, you have options. You can create a die cut sentiment, you can make a stamped sentiment or a foiled sentiment if you have a hot foil machine. The size of the sentiment matters in this formula. I try to keep the sentiment about the size of the label I'm using. I try not to go any bigger, as if I use a bigger sentiment, it will grab all of the attention on your card, which is good in some cases, of course, but not always. I also love to use skinny strip sentiments. These are always the best because they take very little room on a card, thus allowing you to add a lot more elements to your project and they can also work great as sub-sentiments to convey an additional message. By the way, the large foiled birthday wishes is a sneak peek of a glimmer plate that's coming in my new 
collection with spellbinders called Yana's Blooms. And the collection is scheduled to release in January 2022. So you guys are getting a very early sneak peek of something that's coming. So the third ingredient in my formula is a sentiment. Pick one that's not too big, preferably one that's about the size of your label. With sentiments similar to labels, I like to back them up with additional layers of cardstock to add sturdiness, especially with very skinny die cuts. If you add several layers to the skinny die cuts, they end up looking a lot better. And I also pop the sentiments up on my cards with foam adhesive. Number four on my perfect card making formula is florals. You add flowers to any card and the card will pop. I don't think you can ever mess up a card by adding flowers to it. The florals can be die cut, they can be stamped and colored, they can be foiled. Again, whatever you have in your stash, whatever type of floral product you have in your stash, use that to add flowers to your card. And I'm sure you probably have a favorite floral set. For these cards, I prefer to have die cut flowers. So I die cut a bunch of flowers and leaves using spellbinders, simply perfect layered blooms and mini blooms and sprigs dies. These are my favorite this year. The idea here is to use the blooms as pops of color and also as accents on the card. I try to stick to using smaller size flowers and smaller size leaves, and I alternate between the different type of flowers I use in between the different shapes in even different colors. If you have a larger size flowers, it would be best to combine those with skinny stripe sentiments. One large flower would then make a focal point for your card and you add a simple foiled or stamped skinny stripe sentiment on top. And the last ingredient for my perfect card making formula is a small embellishment. It can be gems, jewels, sequins, dots, whatever you prefer to use, whatever you have in your stash, just something small and sparkly to add that last bit of wow to your project. If you went with the die cut flowers, you can also use your embellishments as flower centers. If you used stamped or foiled flowers, you can simply add several gems to the background next to the flowers and next to the sentiment. So there you have it, five simple components to one perfect card making formula. Give it a go and let me know in the comments below if this formula works for you. Come back again in a few days for another video tutorial or check out some of my previous videos. Thanks for watching, love you guys, and I'll see you next time.